Hey there, it's Dr. G. And before I forget, let me remind you to go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss the next video. Um, when people start losing weight really quickly on medications like semaglutide and terzipatide, they often begin noticing changes in their skin and their hair and even their muscle mass. And for many people, these changes can feel sudden and scary. Today, I wanna to talk about a peptide called GHKCU, also known as, known as the copper peptide. And that's shown some promise in supporting the skin, the hair follicles, and soft tissue recovery. But I wanna be very clear from the beginning, this is not a magic fix and it's not a substitute for nutrition or proper resistance training, but it may be a helpful supportive tool when used responsibly and as a part of a larger lifestyle framework. Also, the published data we have right now is limited to animal subjects and not much at all of humans, yet this peptide and many others seem to work and lots of my patients walk into the office already using them. So it's, it's, it's worth getting to know what's out there and what they're all about. So today I'm going to break down what GHKCU actually does, uh, why rapid weight loss stresses certain tissues, and how I think about protecting these systems in my own patients here in practice. Let's start with what's really happening biologically. One of the most misunderstood parts of GLP-1 therapy is how quickly the body shifts into a calorie deficit. People often lose one to three pounds per week in their early months or more, and the body simply doesn't adapt evenly. First, you get skin changes, like the ozempic face. And when facial fat decreases faster than the skin can remodel collagen, the skin may appear deflated or, or aged, sagging. Collagen turnover is slow. It can take eight to 12 weeks to respond, so the skin is playing catch up the whole time. With appetite suppressed, collagen production is not a priority for the body. Next up is hair thinning, and hair follicles are extremely sensitive to stress and nutrition deficiency. When the body senses rapid weight loss, it may shift hair out of the growth phase and into the shedding phase. Low protein intake, and, and, and very common in GLP-1 users, we talk about it all the time, exacerbates this process. Next up is muscle loss. This one concerns me the most. On average, 25 to 40% of the weight loss on GLP-1 medications can come from lean muscle mass if people are under eating protein and not strength training consistently. And this can slow metabolism and make long-term maintenance even harder. These issues are preventable, but they require a proactive plan and an approach. And the copper peptide is possibly one piece of that plan. Not the whole solution, but a supportive tool that we can use and that may help preserve healthy tissue during significant weight loss. So what does the copper peptide actually do? From what we know from studies done so far, um, the copper peptide is, nat is a naturally occurring peptide found in the human body. And it becomes less abundant with age and its primary role is regeneration and repair signaling. You see, it's a problem as we get older, and the research we have, mostly from wound healing, dermatology, and molecular biology, shows four main actions. The first action is gene modulation, meaning GHKCU, the copper peptide, has the ability to turn certain genes on and off. Studies show that the copper peptide can influence thousands of genes involved in tissue repair, collagen production, antioxidant defense, and inflammation. This broad signaling boosting effect is one reason it's being studied for skin health and hair support. Next up is anti-inflammatory effects of the copper peptide causing chronic inflammation accelerates aging of the skin and hair follicles. The copper peptide appears to reduce several uh, certain inflammatory markers which may support healthier tissue environments and healthier skin. Stem cell signaling is up next, and some studies suggest that the copper peptide can help stimulate stem cell pathways involving follicle regeneration and soft tissue repair. And this one proposed mechanism for its potential benefits on hair density. Collagen synthesis is last, and this is the area I personally find most relevant for GLP-1 uh, patients, because the copper peptide appears to support the formation of multiple collagen types and elastin which contributes to skin firmness and elasticity at the same time. Sagging skin is an extremely common complaint in those losing weight beyond about 50 pounds during their weight loss journey, and I can absolutely see a place for copper peptide in these patients' medicine cabinet if it does produce some significant skin tightening, which I've seen it do actually in real life. Again, this peptide does not replace nutrition or resistance training or hydration or lifestyle habits. It is a supportive signal, not a structural building block. 
So I always emphasize that distinction when the patients come in using this medication or asking about it. So here's how I frame it clinically when we do end up using the copper peptide. It's a signaling molecule and protein and nutrients are the building blocks and strength training is the stimulus. If one of those pieces is missing, results will be limited for sure. So how is it typically used? Of course, medical, <laughs> medically supervised, but sub subcutaneous dosing at low daily amounts is one way. Topical formulations for the face and the scalp is, a, is another preparation. You have long-term use measured in months, not weeks, and combined with a structured lifestyle plan, of course, multi-component plans are the best. I always encourage my patients to start supportive measures early, ideally in the first one to two months of their GLP-1 journey, rather than waiting until they notice thinning, sagging, or muscle decline, especially if we have a lot of weight to lose. So this is where I differ from a lot of uh, peptide videos online because no single peptide replaces lifestyle modification. And I'm a lifestyle modification coach, a little biased, but that's the deal. So here's the broader framework I use here. First, protect the skin. Gradual, not extreme, weight loss whenever possible. So you're not losing a ton of weight all of a sudden. Continue adequate hydration, of course. A diet rich in protein, vitamin C, and healthy fats. Continue to use your daily sunscreen. Topical copper peptides or retinoids, if appropriate, and slow patient collagen remodeling over eight to 12 weeks minimum. You should see that happening as you add these steps. Protecting hair. Ensuring protein intake of at least one to 1.2 grams per kilogram per day, depending on your body size, of course. Check ferritin and correct deficiencies. That means you gotta get labs done. And ensure you're taking in zinc and biotin and omega-3 fatty acids, especially if your fish intake is lacking. Address stress and sleep, because these things can, of course, can affect your hair follicles and other processes in the body. We already know that. Consider copper peptides for topicals or medical grade minoxidil if it's appropriate for you. Remember, protecting the muscle, strength training at least two to three times per week, at least 20 minutes per session, protein distributed evenly throughout the day, creatine monohydrate. Did a video on that, at least five grams daily if you're gonna supplement for many patients. Don't go overboard on it. Slow and steady weight loss to avoid excessive lean mass loss too quickly, which then will leave the skin unsupported and sagging, like I said before. Structured recovery and adequate sleep. It is the comprehensive lifestyle approach that makes peptides like the copper peptide more effective, not the other way around. Again, I always wanna be clear and responsible with the data, so let's break down some takeaways. First off, there are no studies specifically examining copper peptide for ozempic face specifically or GLP-1 side effects. Next up is most data comes from um, wound healing, dermatologic, and molecular biology research in lab animals. Improvements tend to be gradual and not dramatic. Consistency matters more than intensity. And lifestyle, and lifestyle modification, and lifestyle medicine remains the foundation for your, your whole journey. And I always believe in transparency. So we use clinical reasoning and existing data to make informed decisions but we never treat a peptide like a cure-all. None of the peptides are, are, are a cure-all for anything. They're supportive in your weight loss or your mi lifestyle modification journey. So if you're losing weight on medications like semaglutide or terzipatide and you started noticing changes in your skin, hair or muscle strength, or please remember, these issues are not inevitable and they are not irreversible. With proper nutrition, resistance training, stress management, and when appropriate, evidence-informed tools like the copper peptide, you can actually support your body through this process. And if you want guidance tailored for your specific situation, you can find the link in the description to learn more about our lifestyle medicine program here at FCMW, where my team and I help patients build a healthy, sustainable GLP-1 journey. As always, stay healthy, stay informed, and I will see you soon.